I'm back with my 1966 Imperial on my way up to Newton to see the Car Wizard. This is an amazing car for the highway. The 440 350 horsepower engine really scoots this thing along. I can cruise it 90 miles an hour, no problem. And the ride is so smooth and comfortable. And as you can see, I am steering with my pinky right now. This is just the perfect land yacht. I love this thing so much. But there are some issues. Now, the seller described this car as a turnkey example. And when I went and looked at it in person, it was pouring rain outside in California, and I couldn't test drive it. All I could do was start it up and push the buttons and all that stuff. So I really couldn't look at it that closely. But still, I knew there was a leak underneath. I could see oil dripping somewhere under the engine. And it's a pretty big leak. If I leave it for a few days, it leaves a puddle yay big but hopefully that's not a big deal put it up in the lift and take a look there is one thing i'm worried about though and that's with this heater it's a cold windy rainy day and i would love to turn on my heater right now but coolant is somehow getting into the fan and spitting it out at me basically i'm getting napalmed when i turn the heat on it is not pleasant i'll turn the heat on right now it's good for a few minutes until it really starts pumping around and uh, then it starts smelling sweet, the windshield gets coated, and uh, I can't breathe. So this thing's more like Christine, it's trying to kill me. While we wait for it to try and kill me, I'll talk about the other issues. I have this squeak in the steering wheel, as you all can hear, and my radio, unfortunately, it has like a rattling noise where the front speaker is. This car only has two speakers, the one front right here on the dashboard in the center, and then this beautiful one with the Imperial logo in the back. And the front one makes a pretty bad rattle noise when I'm just driving it normally. So a few annoyances there, and we are definitely starting to fog up in here. The napalm, <laughs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> I'm gonna get this whole car in the shot. <laughs> what are you coughing for? Oh, I turned on the heater to show the people that the heater's blowing, it's napalming me with coolant. <laughs> you couldn't have just told them that it was doing that? <laughs> I wanted to show it to them and it was a bad idea. Yeah, that sounds like a bad yeah, idea. Yeah, and now the glass is all slimy too. You don't that was... want to inhale that stuff. No, you don't want to inhale that stuff, yes. But here it is, Wizard, my 66 Imperial. Wow, this thing is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's giant. I'm, can you even see? Like, let me look here. <laughs> it's just too big. There's no way for me to get the whole thing in the shot. They don't make cars like this anymore. No, they sure don't. Listen. Yeah, very solid. It, it feels like my Rolls Royce, just an older version of it. A yeah, really is, solid bank vault kind of car. This is back when they would have built things similar to a Rolls Royce. These seats are really nice, too. Yeah. Nice white leather. Original leather, which... Apparently, what made the leather hold up so well is they coated it with uh, sperm oil. oil. <laughs> yeah, it's oil of Why the didn't sperm you tell oil. Me that? Not, not, not sp oil of the it's whale oil, which is environmentally not good. They had to kill whales to put it on the seat, but it was a. I heard that word and I was like, uh, what? Oh. Okay. It's yeah. They. It's okay. So yeah, uh, whales died to uh, coat my seats. <laughs> And it's uh, this thing's an EPA disaster. It is even more than that. It leaks a lot of oil. Um, it's really smooth and drives great going down the highway. But I can visibly see the gas gauge move, which you can't fix that. That's part of the 440. No. But you can look at the oil leak. There is an exhaust rattle, like a hanger's loose. Okay. Obviously, that heater issue is my heater core. I've already ordered one in. You said it showed up, right? Yep, we have it here. Yeah. And I have a rattle in the dash. The speaker, my front speaker, it just, it makes a weird noise like something's loose. So I don't know if you can tear it apart and look into it for me a little bit. Yeah, we could pull it out and look at it. Let's get it on the lift and first check the underneath. All right, this is gonna test your lift. It's a 7,500 pound lift, so I think it can do it. Yeah, it's about five. You can hear it. I can hear it. Take a look at this thing. It's got rainwater all over the place. Yeah. Look at that drum brakes. And they even have a spring on the outside of the drum. Huh. It takes up harmonic noise. It takes it away. That's interesting. It stops really well for drum brakes. 
Yeah, people say, oh, drum brakes are junk, but that's what they're using semi trucks. So mm. they're good brakes. Yeah. Well, the front part of the engine looks looks nice and clean. Very nice and clean. This engine has to have been out before. There's just no way. The, the paint, paint would be color there. looks like a Detroit diesel, that Alpine green. Right. Well, that's factory, but yeah. it's almost too nice. I wonder if it's been out and rebuilt. I think so, probably. Right. Oh, there's my oil. Oh, boy. Am I Mr. Unlucky Rear Main Seal? As well, usual? Probably, it looks like, but we could take these bolts, four bolts off, and we could know for sure. Okay. I'll go grab a wrench. All right. Hey, can I get a flashlight? Maybe people can see uh, this a little no, better. No, we'll skip on the flashlight this time around. Why? Uh, I got a flashlight. I can see what I'm looking at. That's all that matters. What about the audience? They're good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's I won't fine. shine it in your face again. No, no lights. Your main seal's dry. Oh, really? Yes. So is the back of the pan here? Very likely. Let me see if it's coming up from up above. Let me check the other side, too. That's good news. Good news. I think the problem is here that they didn't even put a pan gasket on it. Look, it's just silicone. Oh, really? Just blob silicone sticking out. Probably needs a pan gasket. That's about it. That's it? Yeah. Well, it's a 440, so it should be... Easy enough to find, I would hope. Yeah. Flea bay. Nice. So the oil's kind of going back here onto the transmission panel. Yeah. It's like just making a big kind mess. Kind of like the antifreeze is blowing in your face a minute ago. Right. Well, it was blowing the oil. That's what's going yeah. on. Yeah. All right. Well, here's why they were banned from demolition derbies, the X-Frame. Yeah. Look at how solid this thing is. I was going to talk about that, but look at the frame up here, wizard. Even up here is unbelievable. You have... It splits off. It splits off into three ways, the frame. It's like they did not want this to crumple zone at all. No, they want the crumple to be into the, the next person. This thing's basically a wrecking ball. I bet it could take down a building. <laughs> and this frame is, it is definitely the beefiest frame I've ever seen on a car. It definitely is. Look at that. It's I-beams. <laughs> it's I-beams. It's steel I-beams. Like this is a welded box frame. It's uh -oh. But this stuff here is, that's like Empire State Building pieces. Yeah. And it's wow. in really good shape under here. It's got new exhaust, it looks like. Yeah, I'm hearing a rattle from the exhaust, so I don't know if you can help me hunt that down. It might be touching something. It sounds like a loose hanger. And that, yeah. that gong show you just made. You can hear a rattle there, but mm -hmm. this... Well, maybe I should climb up and run it. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. There's a yellow ladder right over there. There we go. Look. There we go. Let me borrow the flashlight. All right. That thing. The heat riser valve. So that puts warm air into the carburetor and it shouldn't be. It lets it go like through that. the intake and to the other side of the exhaust. Yeah. I see. Under the carburetor. So can you can you fix that? Ah, give me my light back. Can you <laughs> fix it? Yes. And the back here looks very pretty as well. Oh yeah, there was another big leak, I guess, maybe from this diff, huh? Yeah. It's actually leaving a pretty good puddle as well. It's a pinion seal here. Mm. And then back here was the only part of the car that looked a little crusty to me. Oh yeah. Just surface wise, but still. Once again, look at this frame going off in three different <laughs> like, directions like into the corner. It's a tree of metal. It's unbelievable. Well, this car has really been gone through by somebody else. It's nice for a change to buy a car that somebody's already taken all the arthritic things with a almost 60-year-old car and, and gone through it. There's a little leak there, an easy-to-fix rattle. 
What do you think? I think that you did pretty good on this one. Really good. For once. Yeah, you did good. I know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So there's that one other rattle in the dash. Hopefully oh, we let's can... let's take the speaker grill off and see what's under there. That would be great. Yes. What's going on? I'll put it back down. I'll try not to get anything on me on the seats there. Oh, I lost a hubcap, wizard. I noticed that when you came in. I didn't know. I drove it up here in the rain and there was a giant pothole that was covered by water and it must have popped off. Maybe you might go back to that area. It's probably still there. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's something people back in the day had to deal with all the time. We might as well put the roof down for a little extra lighting in here, huh? An ambience. Mm -hmm. Oh, ah, here, turn her on, wizard. There we go. Oh, yeah. This is class, isn't it? And a really roomy back seat, too. Yeah. This, it should be for a 19-foot-long convertible. Hey, you got it. So what's rattling? That. I think it's these things. Here, squish those like that with both hands. Is there money or? Ch well, it looks like somebody attempted a repair of this rattle once before. With duct tape. That's like 50 year old duct tape. <laughs> So I could get a piece of rubber back here and glue it on mm -hmm. and it can rest on that. Yeah. A piece of foam. That'll solve that. While you're under there, did you see the heater core? I've seen the box that's in there. I may be able to get to it fairly easy, but I've had some of these older cars where it's a nightmare to get stuff out. Yeah, so you have no idea how much it's going to cost? Or the oil leaks or the differential? My squeak is easy? Yeah, I can spray some lubricant down in there and take care of that. And my speaker's easy, and that little rattle from the whatever that little thing was is easy. The heat riser valve. So how much do you think it's going to be? I have no idea. Just for the heater core, could be a few hundred bucks, three or four hundred bucks. Really? Let's go in my office and figure it out. Oh, the office. He loves to go in there. We did it in the Previa last time, and that was much more pleasant. Oh, boy. Yes, he's ready. Wizard, I'm always worried what's going to be on your computer when I come in here, but now you have sperm whale oil. Oh, you can yeah. still buy it, huh? Yeah, 30 bucks for, I don't know, what, a couple of them? A couple of them. Must come from Asia where they still do some whaling. Oh, oh, yeah. that was so nice oh. on yours. But apparently it's for medicinal purposes or great for massages and cuts and bruises. No, I'm not putting the sperm whale oil in my they body. A whole pile of them. Yeah, weird. So, how's my list? Okay. Hmm. On your Imperial. Yes. The most expensive thing is probably going to be the heater core. Which I already bought, right? Yeah, we have the co heater core here. So that was a few hundred dollars for the core itself, and then how much to fix it? Probably three to four hundred. It may be a little cheaper, but I don't know. It's old enough car, I can't look up the data. But it gets cheaper from there, right? Yeah. Good. Oil pan I can do for 150. That's about normal, yes. Yeah. That's good. Differential seal, I think. I'll be able to just pull the pinion off and put a new seal on and then tighten the pinion right to the correct torque and that'll be a hundred bucks. Okay, and that takes care of all my leaks. That's the leak. On yeah. a 50 something year old car, that's amazing. It is amazing. If only BMW and Mercedes and the German cars could do that. <laughs> Heat riser rattle, hundred bucks, just mostly labor and put a spring and make sure it's all good to go. Yeah, yeah, that take care of all my noises, huh? The dash rattle. Oh, that too, yes. 80 bucks, maybe a hundred, but probably 80. Okay. Put some rubber or foam strips so it quits the rattling and put that all back together. Perfect. Your steering squeak, I can get a little straw down in there and squirt some lubricant. That's going to be really expensive. Yeah. 75 cents. 70, wait, 75 cents? 75 cents. I'm going to yeah. charge you for the one squirt. <laughs> so the value of you doing this it's is 75 cents. You yeah. must be feeling very generous today because normally you sneezing on the car is $45. So this is great. We might even be able to get some of this oil in there. No, <laughs> no I don't want any more sperm oil oil in the car. Okay. So, what's the total? It will be around eight fifty for everything. That's not bad. Even my Toyota Previa ended up being over a thousand dollars to fix mm -hmm. everything. So, yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. I'm getting better at this as we go along. I, I say that, and then I'll buy some disaster next week. Well, Wizard, I really want this car back. It's prime season for convertibles, so. Well, I want the Maserati back, too. I want my Wagoneer back, too. I want my Miata back, too. Ah. You have to pick which one to start off. Mm, 
we'll create um, Maserati and this. Okay. Thank you, Wizard. I guess you can order your whale oil, and I'll uh, I'll head home. That sounds good. Thank you for watching.